Pokemon is a game that allows you to create seemingly limitless team combinations. You could have some classic powerhouses, a bunch of randos, or a single rat. The possibilities are endless. However, there are a finite number of Pokemon, which means that there must be a finite number of possible teams. But how many are there? Well, that question can get pretty complicated. But when has that ever stopped me before? This is every single possible Pokemon team. Richard, hit that intro. How do we go about solving this? Well, there are over a thousand different Pokemon in existence at this point, and you can pick any six of them to be on your team. You're allowed to repeat Pokemon, you can choose to leave slots empty, you can have them in any order, and already things are getting a little out of hand. So let's start by looking at a simplified problem. Instead of looking at the full set of Pokemon, let's look at a world where these games were really not that exciting and only included six possible Pokemon to choose from to fill your six slot team. And again, for simplicity's sake, let's say that you can't leave any slot blank and you cannot repeat any Pokemon on your team, right? Nobody wants two Rattatas. Well, let's look at this. To start, you have six empty slots and six possible Pokemon to choose from. So let's choose Bulbasaur. For your next slot, you've already picked Bulbasaur, so now you only have five choices. Let's take Pikachu. And now for your fourth slot, you only have four choices. Let's keep going and filling out how many choices you have until you reach the end, where your only choice is Electrode. Because let's be honest, nobody wants Electrode. Alright, so now we have how many Pokemon you had to choose from at any given point. And these numbers don't change no matter who you picked. If we picked Pikachu first, you'd still have five possible choices for your second slot. So how do we take this information and figure out how many possible teams there are? Well, first you had six choices. Each of those six choices would lead to five more choices, and each of those five would lead to four more. So as it turns out, in order to find all the possible ways you can arrange these six Pokemon into six slots, you can just multiply these together. Six times five times four times three times two times one. And in math, there's a nice little shorthand way to represent this, which is called factorial. It's basically when your numbers start yelling at you. Six! So in this example, there are 720 ways that you can arrange six Pokemon on your team. That was pretty easy. Except, as many of you may know, there are a bit more than six Pokemon at this point. So let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. What if there were 10 Pokemon in existence? Well, now for your first slot, you'd have 10 options, for your second you'd have 9, all the way down to 5 for your last. Now we could do this by hand, multiplying them all together, but when you get into bigger scenarios, that's gonna get annoying. So let's find a little shortcut. What we're doing here kinda looks like a factorial, except we're not going all the way down to 1. We're stopping part way through. But how do we represent this mathematically? Well. In math, the opposite of multiplication is division. So if we divided this by four times three times two times one, we could just scratch out all those terms and be left with only the numbers that we want. And if you take away the scratches, you'll see that this can really be written out as 10 factorial over four factorial. Where did that four come from? Well, we really just took the number of Pokemon that we had and subtracted the number of slots. 
So this is really 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 6 factorial for a total of 151,000 possible teams. Just a little bit more. Let's make this a bit more general and replace the number of possible Pokemon or the options that we have to pick from with the letter N. And the number of possible slots or the amount of things that we're choosing with K. Don't know why it was these letters specifically. Some mathematician once upon a time just picked them and we're going to roll with it. This is the general formula to calculate any permutation. A permutation is a set of things where the order of those things is important. However, in a game of Pokemon, you're free to swap around the Pokemon in your party whenever you want. So the order that you receive them in doesn't actually matter. A Pokemon team is an example of a combination set, a collection of things where the order is not important. So we need to modify our equation a bit and figure out a way to remove all the repeated sets that are just the same team arranged in a different order. How do we do that? Well, let's go back to our original example of arranging six Pokemon on a six member team. We found that there were six factorial ways to arrange that team. But every single one of those permutations is the exact same combination of members. No matter how you arrange them, it's the same six guys every time. And that holds true no matter what these Pokemon are. So for every combination of six Pokemon, there are six factorial permutations. To make it more general, we can replace that six with a K again. So if there are k factorial permutations per one combination, that means that the number of permutations will always be k factorial times greater than the number of combinations. So if we want to adjust our formula to find just combinations instead, we can simply divide it by k factorial. This gives us a new formula to find the total number of combinations of Pokemon teams regardless of the order. When you're talking about Pokemon, K will always be six. You always have six slots on your team. And if you were playing the original Pokemon Red and Blue with 151 Pokemon, you could plug in 151 for N and find that there are 14 billion, 888 million, 600,755 possible team combinations. However, this is assuming that you cannot repeat Pokemon on your team, which to be fair, most people won't. Unless you happen to be a random NPC chilling on Route 6, there's no reason for you to have three Pidgeys. However, this isn't a video about the total number of probable teams, and I want to be inclusive to all my NPC friends out there. So let's adjust our formula just a little bit more to allow for repeated picks. Let's go back to our basic example one last time. Six Pokemon, six slots. But now you're allowed to use the same Pokemon twice. So what's really changing here? Well, we're not changing the way that we pick Pokemon or what we care about, but the total number of Pokemon that we have to choose from is changing. That may sound a little confusing, but look at it this way. Say you choose a Bulbasaur for your first one. Well, since you can pick Bulbasaur again, we need to add another Bulbasaur back into the pool. If we picked Bulbasaur again, then you need to add in another Bulbasaur. Then if we pick Pikachu, we'd have to add in another Pikachu and so on until we're done and we don't need to add anyone else back in. Basically, we're replacing each Pokemon in the pool as we take them. 
So if we picked six Pokemon, then we would have to add in five more to the pool. You don't need to replace the last one since you're done so there's nothing else to pick. So it doesn't actually matter. So the general formula for the number of Pokemon added would be K minus one. Since again, you don't need to replace the last one. So our final pool of Pokemon is N, the total number, plus the K minus one that we added in. So in reality, this was the pool of Pokemon that we had to choose from, which goes in the factorial in place of N. We call this combinations with replacement. Again, in our case, K will always be six. And if you were looking at the original Kanto games, N would be 151. Now I could dramatically reveal how many that would be, but we're actually not quite done yet. There's still one more thing that we need to add in. In Pokemon, you don't technically need to fill in every slot. You could leave some blank. Now, don't worry, accounting for this is actually really, really easy. We can just imagine adding in another new Pokemon to our set that's just blank. I don't know, maybe like the missing no guy. So effectively, our set of selectable Pokemon, or N, is one greater than what we think. So we can just replace every N with an N plus one. However, this could result in one tiny edge case, a team with zero filled slots. In the game Pokemon, you aren't allowed to progress without any, well, Pokemon, it's the name on the box. So we need to just chuck that one scenario in the trash and subtract one from our total, leaving this as our final formula for every possible number of teams for any Pokemon game. Just plug in your value for N and let the math do the rest for you. Now, admittedly, this is a lot of work to do by hand, but this is the 21st century, so I've taken the liberty of including a calculator in the description down below. Just save a copy of the spreadsheet to be able to edit it, type in any N you want, and it will give you the total number of team combinations in a second. You can choose how granular you want to be with this, maybe you only want to include fully evolved Pokemon, or you want to go absolutely nuts and find every single possible combination of moves, stats, and levels for every single Pokemon, I leave that up to you. But I know you're here for one of two reasons. Either you have a really cool teacher who showed you a video about Pokemon to trick you into learning about combinations and permutations. Hey, where to go? You know what's up. Or you like really big numbers. Well, don't worry. I've got a big one for you. Currently, there are 1,025 Pokemon in existence. Assuming you had a game where every single one of them was available, there are a grand total of <clears throat> 1 nonillion, 841 octillion, 898 septillion, 868 sextillion, 17 quintillion, 577 quadrillion, 8 trillion, 379 billion, 797 million, 657,599 possible. Pokemon teams. For reference, because that is an incomprehensibly large number, that is roughly one trillion times more than the number of grains of sand on planet Earth, a million times larger than the number of stars in the universe, or a thousand times greater than the number of atoms in the human body. And yes, that does mean that your body contains roughly 35,000 times more atoms than the universe has stars, which I think is pretty wild. So there you go, a quick math lesson and a fun fact for the road. If you like math, science, engineering, and video games, stick around, I do a bunch of stuff like this, and I'm sure you'll like it. All right, well, hopefully this was a fun little break from your class, but, I'm gonna have to let my main man, Mr. Brown, take over. Hey, put it right there. Oh yeah. 
Most of you are probably super confused right now, but I hope there's at least one class that's absolutely losing their mind. I don't even know! I don't even know about Mr. Brown! Oh my god, that's you! That's you right there, Mr. Brown! He guessed it! He and a massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for to Win, Captain Kirby, Sidian, Sherry and Mark, Stylish, The Boss Killer 94, Tricks of Crows, and did you know that the character limit on the Patreon name is very high? Well, it is high enough, in fact, that I could name myself M. Thanks, M.